Some of you have met us already. We're the Barclay and the Jones. What do we do? We do three things. We train recruiters and not just on Bullhorn, by the way. We help a lot of our clients onboard new starters and help them get more experienced ones cooking with gas. And again, not just on Bullhorn. So watch this space. Ultimately, as well, we do a lot of Bullhorn ROI work. So what does that really mean? That means we come in and we look at your business and we look at your goals and we look at your processes and we look at your systems. And then we say, right, what's the vision like? What, where is it you want to go? And we help you create an ROI journey, which involves configuring your Bullhorn system to go faster, get your data cleaned up. If you've got automation, getting that cooking with gas and ultimately working more with your recruiters as well. And then the final thing we do is that Bullhorn automation piece where we do a lot of work. And one of the things that we did establish yesterday is We've done over 350 bullhorn automation implementations now, which is a lot. And every single one is just as important, no matter whether you're a one person business or a five million person business. But we've also done over 100 buddy programs, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, some of our clients are also hit clients, recruitment hit. Recruitment hit is in front of you right now. And the point of recruitment hit is it's an online training platform with the DNA running through it is my my name's John Smith or Jane Smith. I'm a recruiter. What's in it for me? So all of the training on our recruitment hit platform is aimed at recruitment consultants and really really helping them win their hearts and minds with best in class systems and processes and recruitment hit has pure recruitment training on temp recruitment perm recruitment sales training teams idibu pager linkedin all sorts of stuff as well as analytics and automation and bullhorn etc so yeah this is recruitment hit and we'd love it if you gave it a go if you're not a client already because it's working wonders in the clients that we've got it working with so it's all about roi and great time spent on the system and placing quicker and making more money so this is our platform right talk to us about buddy wayne what is recruitment what is recruitment buddy that'd be nice what is automation buddy Automation Buddy is uh, our service whereby uh, we are able to retrain uh, or train new users on your business uh, on automation. Uh, those people who are not quite as confident as they should be on automation or they just want a bit more support. They want somebody to give them some coaching, some direction, some strategy. Um, we will sit down with them and we'll work with them uh, to build automations or at least give them some direction about where they should be heading or what they shouldn't be doing. Uh, or for those busy clients that are too busy for building, don't have enough time then we will sit down with the client identify what they want and then we go away and build it so we've got some buddies of our clients on on the call today which is nice so welcome we've obviously got loads of things that we could sell you but we're going to move through this but we've got some really big fans in the industry as well now something to bear in mind is we've got we do our automation webinars every month so this one is obviously about making more money we're going to show you that but then ultimately as well is recruiters are on the whole make more money when they know what they're doing and the system's designed to help them do that and very much important very much they also know the processes but also they need more time sometimes or they, they need to focus themselves on the right stuff so the next month is coming up and i'm going to put the link in the chat in a second this one is going to be really interesting because it's going to help you um, improve the performance of your lovely teams and get them really focused on the right things at the right time i want to understand what it is that you are getting from automation grab your mice and just quickly tick a box for me. We always take the temperature in every single webinar that we run. We're always really interested in what, what you're getting from the platform. And it's it's very pertinent because certainly in the webinar, in the live session we had at Bullhorn HQ yesterday, there was a lot of language around, I need Bullhorn automation to limit the need for me to hire loads of people. I need Bullhorn automation to clean up my data. I need it to help me generate more sales. I need it to help me weaponize my data and manage my candidate and client experiences. And it is capable of all of that stuff. Yeah, it's not just there to do one of those things. And, and that list is, by the way, not exhaustive. Bear in mind as well, we have monthly Bullhorn Tips webinars. These may be perfect for you or your lovely recruiters. So please get them booked. So next month, we're focused on five ways to make more money. By the way, last week, we, we looked at five ways to find more jobs within Bullhorn so you can do more sales. Lovely. The recording of that is on our website. So please grab that, have a good look around and look out for the webinars that come out as well very soon um, because they were uh, the mailers that come out very soon because that's got a list of all of the different things that you can get access to. I'm interested in, in Bullhorn adoption within your business. Quickly tell me, is it the first place on the whole your recruiters go to to um, 
find more data, source from it, place from it, sell from it, manage their time? Is it the last place they go? Is it a bit of a blend? For one of our clients, it's recently become the only place that their staff are allowed to go. Certainly, we've been saying for years that 80% on average of candidates placed, you you had them all along before you sourced them from elsewhere. But Ballhorn gave us some data actually yesterday to freaking prove that as well. So that's something for you to bear in mind. We're always interested, though, in how you want to improve your performance. Where could you actually improve your performance? I want you to be really thinking about that. We're not going to necessarily have time to ask you that question today, but really think about where could you be pointing that automation laser in the next 60, 90 days. I'm going to move on. So have a look at these stats. Keep these stats in mind whilst you are listening to Wayne's ideas about how you're going to monetize your automation system. These are not good stats or rather, you know, 50% of your leads pointless. Yeah, but you're still maybe trying to work all of them. Maybe 50% of your recruiter's time is spent doing the wrong stuff. But actually, if you, you if you get the recruiters back inside Bullhorn and you you use automation as a, as a sheepdog <laughs> to get them back inside and, and using what you're paying for, um, then why pay for it twice by looking elsewhere? So think about that while, you, while Wayne's talking to you about this stuff, because I want you to make your recruiter's jobs as easy as possible. We talked a lot actually yesterday with the lovely James Osborne around the culture of recruitment and how it's changing and potentially the types of creatures that are being hired into the recruitment world. They're not necessarily 360 recruiters anymore. They are specialist technicians aimed at certain parts of the recruitment life cycle in some businesses. So there was an interesting quote yesterday as well, wasn't there, Lisa, which was basically uh, they say that 360 model was dead and that everyone is now moving to a 180 model and having specialist roles across the business. Yeah, absolutely. So think about how automation is giving you more choices about how you run your businesses and how you run your desks. That's the thing to consider here. It's not just another bit of kit. You know, when I've used a lot of technology in the last 25 years, this sits at the top of it's a transformation system, not just a bit of kit that you adopt when you've got a minute. OK, so off you go, Wayne. I'm going to shut up and hand over to you. So um, first slide is uh, always about automation. If you don't have automation, then as I'm talking today, you could be thinking about how you can manage your account. Um, how can you be managing your your existing client database or maximizing the opportunities that you find? Uh, or alternatively, one of the areas that I'm going to be covering is jobs. Uh, so how can you proactively be managing your jobs? And if you haven't got automation, what could you be doing in Bullhorn instead? So that's what I want you guys to be thinking about if you don't have automation already. So first thing I'd like you to do is we've got a quick poll. Um, I'm always intrigued. I, I see a lot of clients working on lots of different um, automations, but sometimes with no real strategy. And we've just come off the phone to a client who wants us to focus around um, a, a specific part of the process for him. Um, and my first question is, are you job sure or candidate sure? Where should automation be focused or where should our efforts be? So another client recently was very job short, and I'm going to speak uh, about an example of them uh, later on. Uh, but we identified thousands of potential contacts um, that we wanted people to engage with. Um, uh, and there was an automation that was built out to try and do that. So again, it's looking at thinking about your strategy with automation. Are you focused in the right areas? Are you adding value to the recruitment process? Yeah, uh, and your recruiters specifically and the business overall. Um, if you're not, then you might need to pivot. Just think about where it is you're, you're struggling, where your issues and challenges and opportunities could be to improve. Okay. I want to close that one down, Lisa. That'd be great. It's pretty much a split mix of job short and candidate short, and some clients saying that they've got uh, a mixture of both. A couple of clients saying they're neither. They're obviously in a great space. Okay. Uh, the agenda today, it says five automations to make your money. A little tip here, there's more than five. I'm going to go into a detail, a, a number of them. Uh, and on top of that, um, related to leads a second ago, there was something that popped up uh, that was talking about leads and how you maximise the opportunity for those leads. There's going to be a little tip there as well in terms of uh, candidate ratings. And you can use that for leads ratings as well. So we'll, we'll cover that off later on as well. Um, today, I'm going to be very much focused around where you can make money. Um, so the next slide will show us uh, where I want to be focused uh, and that is the account management phase. We're looking at opportunities to maximize the existing relationships that you have. 
For those of you who are job short, this is going to be really, really beneficial to you today. Uh, those of you who are candidate short, some hints and tips in there as well that you'll be able to take away with you as well. Uh, but yeah, account management, that placement process. We're very good at making placements. We're not particularly great at managing and nurturing those placements. Um, one of the stats that you definitely want to be looking at is how much repeat business do we get? Now, if you've got a very high repeat business, you're obviously very good at account management. If it's not there, then these are the sorts of things you could be doing. The first automation I really want to focus in on, and it used to be a blueprint. Um, it's been removed as a blueprint now, but it's the clients at risk. So there's two automations. That post placement process, we're very good, as I say, at making placements, but not particularly great at nurturing and keeping in contact with those people. So we build two automations for clients. One is clients at risk. Now, our definition of a client at risk is somebody whereby we've, we've made placements in the last 12 months, but we're lacking some activity. In this instance, we're suggesting that you have not had a, a note, a specific note type that's been added, which would indicate some meaningful contact. Uh, and we've not had a job for more than six months with these clients. So this is an opportunity for us to send out an email to recruiters and say to them, here's a list of people that you really should be nurturing, you should be keeping in contact with. So long as your recruiters are adding notes, these people won't be added to this client at risk, so there's no problem. But if you've got, if you run this, this list, if you build this as a, an advanced search in Baldwin Automation, just have a look at that number. Here I've got 16, it's not a problem. We did this for a client recently, 258, that was a bigger problem. Another client, there was over 3,000. That was a huge problem. So there was a huge opportunity for you to engage these clients. So considerations are identify what your date range is for when you say clients at risk. Identify what specifically you're lacking in bullhorn. And that may mean that you need to train your recruiters in terms of this is what we need you to do to ensure that your clients or your sales contacts don't drop into this list. Now, from an automation perspective, I keep this really, really simple. I want to send a daily notification. I may wait what I may 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 wait for a period of time. Couldn't get more words out there. Um, that may be a week, that may be a day if you're really aggressive, it may be a month, whatever that time frame is. Uh, and if they're still in that list, that means in theory, they, we've not picked up a job or somebody's not added a note. So therefore, there might not have been any meaningful conversation. So we send another notification. But this time, we also include the reports to you so that we can escalate that back to managers or team leaders. So they're aware that there are people that we should be speaking to and they can sit down with your recruiters. Yeah, and talk to them about what is it we're trying to do? Why are we not speaking to these people? I then would end all automation and then I would use the re-entry settings maybe every 30 days or every three months. You have to allow those people to drop back into that list if we're still having a challenge. So clients at risk. I think this is probably one of the most important automations that you would have to ensure that you're nurturing your clients and you're reminding your recruiters who they should be speaking to. Now, one other consideration I've not put in here, and that is la uh, inactive bullhorn users. So your, your uh, owner assignment rules in Bullhorn Automation will kick in. If you've got, I don't know, 50% of these clients at risk are not owned by somebody because they've left your business, then you either have to exclude them or you have to advise your recruiters. There's going to be people in this list that are not officially in your, in your name, but we would likely still reach out to them. Yeah, so that's a really, really important process that I think clients at risk is going to add value. You will pick up jobs. I will almost guarantee it, assuming that the market's not completely flat uh, or massively in decline. But speaking to your existing clients is just a, a, an obvious thing to do. Um, the next automation follows on from this one. So I've said clients at risk or anybody whereby we've not added a job and we're not speaking to in the last 12 months. Well, that leads us on to what happens post 12 months in my world, and I would call those lapsed clients. So anybody that's maybe 12 months, and I've said 36 months, but some clients just say 12 to 24 months. Yeah, agree what that date range is of where you want to uh, um, uh, analyze. Yeah, identify again those uh, lacking activities. Now I've got in there, and again, I'm gonna show you this in a bit more detail in a second, um, uh, my note types, specific note types that I would expect my recruiters to have done 
to show that there's meaningful contact. Uh, also shows that we've not added jobs again, so it's very similar to the uh, appetite, uh, the client at risk process. The one thing I want to highlight here is this section up here, and I'm going to show you this in a bit more detail in a second. This is my date range. I want it more than 12 months and less than 36 months. So I'm going to show you exactly what that needs to look like and how that needs to be structured because I see a lot of people get that wrong and therefore their, their results are inflated and when you then send information out to your recruiters, they go, well, I'm talking to these people, what are you talking about? And therefore they, they, they don't trust the information you're sending to them. So we need this information to be accurate. But again, the journey is very, very similar to the clients at risk. It's the same principle. We're trying to reach out to clients and all we're doing is sending notifications to, uh, to, to recruiters at this precise moment in time. There is some evolution in this. You could start adding in emails to these sales contacts if that's the way in which you want to go. Um, I, I don't see a problem with that. Just again, so long as you're aware and your recruiters are aware, that's what you're going to be doing. Now, let's have a look at this, this list because this list is really, really important. Uh, if we click on the next slide, um, there is a right way and a wrong way of being able to do a date range in automation. So here is, I want to be able to identify that 12 to 36 months. And what I see most people do is they say, I'll have, we have a placement less than 36 months and we've had a placement more than 12 months. There we go, job done. But if you notice my stat there, my number is 2,442 in this particular instance. Now, the actual way of writing this out is saying we have a placement less than 36 months, that takes it down to that. But then we're saying we do not have a placement less than 12 months. So I'm excluding that not to 12 months range. In the first example, because I'm saying less than 36 months, it's also including that not to 12 months in my list criteria. So the correct way of doing it is saying has placement less than and then does not have placement less than. That's how you build a date range within your list criteria. It's really important that people see that. As you can see, my number is almost halved um, by doing that. The other one, the other thing I see as well on the next slide uh, is the, the way in which people try and identify lack of activity. Um, what we tend to see is this note type is not, and then we list out those note types. Now by listing out those note types, there are or statements. So it's this or this or this. So if one of those, if set, let's assume that somebody has added a BD call, well, it's because the other two don't match, the uh, uh, BD email sent and the uh, the outbound email, uh, BD email, uh, the BD call not happened, they would still be added to my list, even though there is a specific note that's been added. So what you have to do is you have to list out individual note types. Yeah, and you say note type is not this one and note type is not this one and the note type is not this one. That way you'll consolidate all of your um, candidates or those sales contacts in this instance into your list and they mustn't have had any of the, those note types. So two really, really great tips and two common mistakes that I see whereby lists are not as accurate as they should be. Okay, so clients at risk and lapsed clients, two really quick ways of being able to identify opportunities for you to pick up the phone and have calls with, with candidates and sorry, sales contacts that are very, very um, uh, warm to your business because you've made placements with them in the past. The next area that I want to sort of um, go into is job management. So as recruiters, we're generally pretty good at picking up jobs or identifying leads and opportunities. But around the job management phase, we need to be quick at delivering our jobs. We need to be getting candidates in front of our clients before our competitors, potentially in some instances. So I've listed out four automations here that I think you should all be focused around on. And that's basically making sure that we're proactively uh, uh, understanding what jobs we've actually got open. Far too often do I see um, uh, going to a, a bullhorn automation system on a client's site and, and we see, well, we've got 3,000 jobs. We're fine for jobs. But when you look at the age of those jobs, the vast majority of them are really old. Now, if you've got analytics as well, that makes your analytics very, very um, uh, overweight. It may fool you into thinking we've got loads of jobs, got loads of potential there. So have an automation that will look at those jobs that are over a certain period of time. And if they're still open, then message the recruiter, 
and tell, ask them to shut them down, or failing that, after a period of time, automatically shut them down. If you work in a temp or contract environment, those timeframes could be days as opposed to weeks if you work more in a perm, in perm world. So make sure you've got automations that are tracking how long something's been opened and either escalate it or alternatively uh, close it down so that you know and understand exactly how many jobs you've got open and what it is your potential could be. Once you've understood what you should be working on, yeah, then you've got other opportunities to identify how quickly we're managing those jobs. So new jobs added more than a day ago, but we've not got we've not got any covers, as some clients call it, but nobody shortlisted or submitted candidates against the job. So let's assume that you know you're working on a contract role, your SLA is that you need to get CVs over to a client within 24 or 48 hours. If you've got jobs whereby you've got nobody shortlisted, then how are you going to be able to get CVs over the, over the, over over to your client as quickly as possible? Yeah, that will highlight very quickly as to whether or not people are working those jobs quickly and efficiently, or if they're not, you can escalate that again using the reports to field or the reports to option uh, and get that to your managers quickly so they can sit down with the team as well and say what's going on. Now, for those of you who are really insightful, you'll know how many shortlists or how many submissions you need to add to a job in order to ensure that you've got sufficient numbers of interviews and ideally placements. So one of our clients knows full well that if we send out three, no, 10 CVs to a client, we will get three interviews. So they have an automation that's set up that says, we must have a bare minimum of 10 candidates shortlisted against a job. And there is a really great little tool now within the list criteria, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. So we're gonna look at that one in a bit more detail. The other one is that we've not got submissions or CVs submitted within a certain period of time. Yeah, so if we haven't sent CVs over, say within three, four, five, six days, then again, are we proactively managing that job as quickly as we can? So where do your jobs get stuck are the considerations that you need to consider? How are you monitoring and tracking the progress of those jobs? And you might need to think about differentiating between temp, contract and perm roles as well. So you may end up having three different automations that's managing temp, contract and perm. Uh, if you do that, you may just have a branch, depends on how you operate. But let's go into a bit more detail about the, the, the less than 10 candidates shortlist and submissions. Um, this was introduced, oh, I'm going to say this year. I think it was around this year. It may have been late last year. Um, but I don't know if you've noticed there's these three options that say number, job number of openings, job number of placements, and job number of submissions. And you can build this into your list criteria. So if you're wanting to say, I want a job that's been open for more than three days, any job that's been open for more than three days, then on that basis, I need to make sure I've got this number of submissions in there because that's going to make sure that we kind of cover um, that that role, that job, and we're going to be able to send CVs out. And in theory, we might even be able to make some placements from that. I put a rough indication around uh, what some clients work towards. In order to make one placement, they need to have three CVs or three interviews. In order to generate one interview, they normally have to send over, and it's normally about anywhere between eight uh, and 15 CVs. Uh, if your active bullhorn database is 15%, let's assume that in all of your data, there's 15% of the active candidates in your database. Doing some basic calculations, that may mean you need 300, submit, 300 submissions per job. That's a very large number. I need to go and double check those things, but I'm pretty sure they're right. So you may need to have an instance whereby, well, as a long list, we need to make sure that we've got this number of submissions because that will generate and drive our activity through to a placement. So use the job number of submissions. That goes into your list criteria. Uh, it's a really great way of identifying whereby you're not adding enough covers or shortlists or submissions against your job. So there's some really good, interesting um, uh, automations there looking at nurturing your existing relationships and also nurturing your jobs. That will naturally make money for you. It's one of those things that experienced recruiters probably do very, very good. The other thing that they're not very, uh, the younger recruiters, they may not be as on the ball or they may not be aware of how quickly uh, recruitment has to work. So get your recruiters working in, the, in that way. Um, send them their lists. It's really important. Those are essentially call lists um, and tell them exactly what you want them to do and then get feedback, promote the successes, promote the ROI across the business. We had one client, there was a really experienced recruiter 
um, you know, 15 years worth of experience uh, uh, of recruitment, um, they would regularly place every single month they score. And then for a couple of months, they didn't, whatever reason. Um, and so we sent them these lists and they didn't want to engage with them. Um, first time when we sent them, they just didn't do it. So then we had to speak to the manager and said, I can't speak to these people. Um, they reluctantly picked up the phone and started calling these people. And the first three people, three, first three sales contacts they, they called, they picked up three jobs. So you might need to nudge people. You might need to really sort of use the stick to try and get people to engage with these things. But by doing that, you should be able to sort of identify if it's working and then promote the successes across your business. OK, something else that we're doing now, which is a bullhorn first tip. Uh, this relates to um, uh, being able to identify good quality data. So as a recruiter, um, we're very, very good at interviewing candidates. And in some instances, you may sort of have a, a rating or a grading system against your, your candidates. But again, you can do this against your vacancies. You can do this against your leads. This will help you identify what your good quality data is. Now, the biggest challenge we always have around this is, unfortunately, most people just have ABC. And so Wayne comes along and interviews Enzo here. And he goes, God, Enzo was brilliant. I've given him a grade A. And a couple of weeks later, Lisa comes along and interviews Enzo. And all of a sudden, uh, that grade has been changed to a C. Enzo wasn't very good. Yeah, he wasn't quite right for my role. Um, you can see here, Matt, this is Matt. Matt's interviewed Enzo here. He's graded his candidate up and he's put his initials. This, this is a, a, a list, um, uh, a drop down list, I think, uh, uh, in which basically we've got the consultant's initials and then ABC. So every recruiter has their own set of ABC codes. So that means I could have graded up Enzo here as an A, Lisa could have come graded as an Enzo B, yeah, and that means we haven't lost that intelligence, we haven't lost that information. What we're also showing here at the end is what happens to this data. Um, it enables you to basically run some searches. Here is Matt basically saying, here's a list of my A grade candidates. It's really useful, really powerful way of being able to engage and identify this data. Um, this means that these are the people that I really should be keeping in contact with. Once you've got that level of information, then you can start using automation to interrogate that information. Yeah, Matt, you've not spoken to Amber yeah, in the last three weeks. You need to go and give Amber a quick call. Automation can nudge your recruiters to going down that. Now, you can set these ratings or these grading lists up in Bullhorn, uh, obviously the ATS and the admin area and the field mappings. Um, there's already a, a ratings field, I think it's called, or grading field already there. You might just need to evolve it. But you can do this for candidates. You can do this for sales contacts. You can also do this for jobs. So one of our clients has ABC, but they also have 10 questions. And those 10 questions identify as to whether or not it gets a grade of C10, which means it's a really hot job. We've got exclusivity. We understand that we, we can fill that role. Down to A1, which is, ugh, we shouldn't really be touching that. But you can do that with leads as well or your clients as well. Then the most important thing here that you need to bear in mind is you must make sure you've defined what ABC, what, you, what is your grading system, and how are you sharing that and communicating that across the business? Because everyone's A should be an A. Not, well, mine's an A, but actually I use A as a B. Yeah, that doesn't work for, for, for the business. So ratings and gradings, there's a quick tip there. That means that everyone can have their own grading system, yeah, and it doesn't impact their own data when they update it. I think it's a really, really great way of working. Uh, so uh, your automation next steps, you're gonna do anything this month, go and review your processes. Some of you are job short. Yeah, go and look at those specific automations. Those of you who are not job short, you should probably still look at certainly managing the jobs. Are you getting those jobs through as fast as you possibly can? Uh, speak to your teams. Identify where those problems are. Identify when I've sent you this information. Are you getting value from it? What are you doing with that information? Is it going into the junk filter or you know, have you got a forward rule that's pushing it straight into the deleted items? Yeah, try and get some feedback, understand what it is. Decide on the automations. I've given you six, seven examples there that you could potentially use. Go away, build them, test them, monitor, release them and then monitor them to make sure you're getting the results. And again, if you need some extra support or you need somebody to sit with you and work, work your way through this, this uh, these automations with you, uh, reach out to us and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, show you some buddy programs.
Right, everybody, thank you so much for your time today. Remember, obviously, we've got recruitment here for you to help you get your lovely teams cooking with gas. Evidently, as well, we've got our buddy program, which will help you get your automation platform really singing. So if you're not already using automation, we can help you implement it from scratch. If you have got it and you need a buddy to help you build or strategize or coach you um, or just hand the whole lot over to us and we'll get it sorted, then you know where we are. Don't forget on our website, a whole host of other webinars from a back catalogue perspective, whether it be sourcing, productivity, time management, anything to do with helping you make your bullhorn automation and bullhorn CRM work more effectively. And obviously we've got our webinars coming up as well. So be sure to register. I'm going to be sending you all a message this afternoon with links because we want to get you on there as quickly as possible to secure your place. But otherwise, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope you got at least one idea that could revolutionise how you do stuff. Um, and we'll catch up with you very, very soon. Take care.